A brand new Jurassic Park survival game has just been announced, which means brand new lore, brand new theories and everything else in between. So we're going to look at this trailer in depth, covering everything which could potentially change Jurassic Park's lore for the future. And as you know, this entire channel is based around Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, theories, lore, information. So we're going to get stuck straight in. Now, Jurassic Park survival looks to be set during the events of Jurassic Park, perhaps only a few days after, because everything seems to be quite intact we have the velociraptor still in the freezer all of the key locations from the film were there as if they had just happened so that tells us immediately that jurassic park incident has just happened we see a very short snippet of gameplay towards the end which seems like a cross of alien isolation and jurassic park horror which is perfect because us the fans want a game like that now the one thing everyone is going to be asking is is this game canon to the film franchise and looking at the game the source material looks like it could possibly be everything seems to fit the universe of the film Jurassic Park down to a T even the story seems to fit where there seems to be a doctor left behind on Isla Nublar and needs some type of rescue again very plausible during the original film there doesn't seem to be any law breaking elements as such like some outlandish hybrid theory monstrosity like we could have seen in Jurassic Park 4 so in regards to being canon to the films it looks like it's a good chance and if not it it could always be soft cannon like Jurassic Park the game. Now looking back over the trailer frame by frame, I've uncovered more truths to the Jurassic Park franchise. So let's go over them together. First off, we obviously see the island with John Hammond talking in the background. So there isn't a lot to dissect, but then we move into the waterfall sequence and we see a Jurassic Park Jeep there. Now this is extremely interesting because this Jeep would have been left behind from the evacuation of the original Jurassic Park, the Jeep which Hammond, Dr. Sattler, Dr. Grant and Ian Malcolm took. Along with the kids obviously so when they left that was the jeep which they left there and this is something on first glance you wouldn't really pick up so let's continue on we then have the scene with the destroyed land cruiser which then starts to pan up towards the main road just outside the tyrannosaur paddock again this is fantastic because it basically confirms a theory i had on the paddock anyway which you can find on the channel we then see a herd of gallimimus running past the t-rex enclosure and what looks to be dr alan grant's hat on the floor which gets completely stampeded by the herd of gallimimus they then pans to the visitor center and it looks to me as if a huge storm is going on so this must literally be the day after or during the events of the original 1993 jurassic park but the next scene basically confirms the timeline we are now inside the visitor center and as you can see the skeleton of that t-rex has fallen to the ground and that only happens at the end of jurassic park just before they evacuate the island so this tells me that everyone has evacuated the island it is probably the day after and this lady is now trapped on the island so that basically confirms the timeline of events for this game, but it doesn't tell us anything else. For that, we're going to have to keep digging and keep looking. Now the next scene seems to pan around the visitor center and basically confirms we play as a doctor left behind on the island. Dr. Maya Joshi, who's a brand new entry into the entire Jurassic Park franchise. Upon it panning around the visitor center, we actually see a claw mark, three claw marks in what looks to be in metal or the wall. This would presumably have been from the Rex potentially, or one of the Velociraptors, although it's very hard to actually tell. The T-Rex unlikely would have had the strength to do that to the wall. The same goes for the Velociraptors, because that gas looks absolutely absolutely massive so this could actually come from a new dinosaur we haven't seen in Jurassic Park yet we then see the old banner which is on the floor obviously which goes in front of Rexy at the end of Jurassic Park and then in comes the fan favorite Dilophosaurus and it makes an appearance exactly where the Velociraptor did and exactly the same camera angle as what Ellie sees in Jurassic Park now this entire trailer is jam-packed with fan references and callbacks to the original Jurassic Park and that's just one of many as we continue now this is probably one of my favorites where our antagonist goes into the kitchen and again so many callbacks here the camera angle looking at the door is exactly the same as the original jurassic park and cam cretaceous callback but instead of a velociraptor coming through the door it's now a dilophosaurus what is extremely interesting about this scene as well is all the pots and pans which are hit over by the velociraptors when they were chasing lex and tim are all in the exact same positions as you can see there that is exactly where the velociraptor would poke his head through during that scene and you also see the ladle which falls off the hook and alerts the velociraptors now as she makes your escape from the kitchen from that dilophosaurus it pans and we see the cold storage unit now if you remember one of the velociraptors was actually locked inside of you because at this point in the timeline the two velociraptors would have been killed by the jurassic park t-rex leaving only one velociraptor presumably in that cold storage unit but that's something we'll come back to later 
But just quickly before we move on, you can see that the original lock they used to lock it in is now unlatched. That door can be opened. This part is also extremely interesting because she seems to be taking the route that Ellie and Robert Muldoon took when Ellie was making her way to the power backup generator shed. We then see a lovely nod to Dennis Nedry and the Dilophosaurus because the Dilophosaurus pokes his head around the tree exactly like it does with Dennis Nedry. I absolutely love that callback and I think it's fantastic. Another point I'd like to mention at this stage is that the graphics are absolutely fantastic. At some point, I forget, I'm actually watching a video game trailer and it kind of feels like a live action trailer to me. Simply superb by the studio. We then have the classic Dilophosaurus attack with the frills and the spit as she runs off into the jungle. Which brings her into the front of the original Jurassic Park gates at the start of the tour. And I love that because that's coming full circle there. But you might have noticed this isn't even the front of the Jurassic Park gates. Oh no. But she goes through them and then you see that magnificent circle shot in the background of the original Jurassic Park gates as she runs past them but not before falling and collapsing right in front of a T-Rex trek and you know what's coming next oh yes the ripples just like Ian Malcolm sees when he's in the jeep waiting to be picked up and leave from that initial T-Rex encounter in the original Jurassic Park it then pans behind her and guess who we see the legendary Rexy right in front of the legendary Jurassic Park gates were an absolutely phenomenal shot and then we get some gameplay footage. And this bit is extremely interesting because it's featuring locations we've never seen in the original Jurassic Park before. It starts with us kind of like leaping off a raft and going into a like Jurassic Park boating shed where she gets attacked by what looks like a Velociraptor. Now we'll talk about that Velociraptor later on, but let's talk about this Jurassic Park boating shed. Because not once in the Jurassic Park law has it ever been mentioned of a boating shed. Well, not in the movie universe, but in the novel universe, Dr. Alan Grant and the kids actually go into like a boating shed and steal a river raft. This could be a reference to that and something we'll see in the game. It definitely looks like some type of crossing of some sort, like the crossing we see at the beginning of Jurassic Park, where Donald Gennaro is being pulled to the other side. Remember that scene? We then see our antagonist in what looks like a sewer being attacked by the T-Rex. Now, as we know, we do see Dr. Alan Grant, Lex and Tim in one of these massive rain ducks. So it could easily be one of them. And it does look to be that type. We then have the title card. And just before it finishes, it pans back to that cold storage. And we see the door fling open with a Velociraptor cry out. That's confirming that Velociraptor, which was trapped in Jurassic Park, is now free. And obviously, we know it's free because we see it attack us on that little raft. Now, the main question on everyone's minds is, is this going to be canon to the Jurassic Park franchise? And what is the release date going to be? I'll talk about that information in a second, but what I would like to say, it is so easy to pick out references and Easter eggs, which are not really there. For example, you could easily say, oh, look, there's a T-Rex there in this trailer, just like we see a T-Rex bursting out of the original 1993 paddock. Yes, the similarities are there, but that is not an Easter egg. That is just a similarity slash coincidence. So you will not find any of that in this breakdown, as you have noticed, because I could easily drag this on for 20 minutes and waste your time, and I don't believe that is the right thing to do. If you're a Jurassic Park fan like me, which I know you guys are, you want the nitty-gritty, everything we've just talked about, none of that type of rubbish. With that out of the way, the potential release date and whether it's canon or not, release date is very hard to say at this time. I'd probably say mid-2024 to the end of 2024, especially as most gameplay trailers at the Gameplay Awards were aiming towards the end of 2024 for 2025 release. So in reality, I would expect it to be the back end of 2024, early 2025. In regards to my thoughts on it actually being canon to the Jurassic Park universe, I believe it actually will be. It seems like the source material has been upheld extremely well, there's no outlandish concepts in there, and all this could easily fit into the Jurassic Park universe. No problems. Unless there's something in there which might make Universal think, hmm, we can't really include that. But it doesn't seem likely. The only thing I could think of is that massive claw mark in the wall, something with extreme strength, three claws, and something we haven't seen yet. That's the only thing which holds question marks for me. Well, on what we've seen anyway. I for one are extremely excited to have a horror game inspired by Jurassic Park. I only hope it lives up to the hype and is as good as Alien Isolation because that's a fantastic game. If you enjoyed this and you're a Jurassic Park fan, I highly recommend subscribing because there's plenty of Jurassic Park and Jurassic World related content on the channel. I'd like to thank my YouTube members. Thanks guys for supporting. Your names are on screen now. I couldn't do it without you. I'm Shadows and can I solve Jurassic Park related theories? You bet Jurassic I can. Catch you later.